You may have noticed that my Linux numbers were missing from my 3060 12 gig review. And it's not because I didn't want to include them in there. In fact, actually you guys voted on it and I was all for it. No, something catastrophic actually happened to my install of Pop! OS. After installing an update, the update right before I started benchmarking, everything broke, like completely. And I had to nuke the entire OS and start over. Now, I did use this as an opportunity to really see how far Valve has really come with Proton, and if possibly out of the box, Proton might actually be a much better experience than it was when I first started this saga into Linux gaming. And I'm happy to say that yes, yes, it not, not only did this actually perform really well, but it performed within a margin of error of Windows and at sometimes even better without modification. This is without game mode. This is without Proton GE. This is literally out of the box, Pop! OS, latest version of Steam and Proton. And the best part is, this is the same kind of performance that we're probably gonna see on the Steam Deck and going forward with Linux and its compatibility. So let's, let's get into it right after our intro. Now to start, let's actually talk about our test system. Our test system is my standard test bench, which is a reasonable configuration of a Ryzen 7 3700X with 32 gigs of DDR4 memory running at 3400 speed. We have two SSDs, both rated similar speeds for both our Windows and Linux installs, which isn't as big of a factor on Linux as you would think. We have identical gaming drives for each system as well, with them being the four terabyte versions of the WD Black gaming drives. Now, outside of that, we're also using a Noctua NHD15 as our cooler, and our card in question is the MSI Gaming X OC 3060 12GB. This configuration is honestly pretty mid-ranged, and I could easily see this being a PC that someone is actually using. On Windows, we ran with an overclock, which unfortunately for Linux isn't as easy to do. Now we can overclock in the BIOS, but um, my easiest overclocking tutorial rules don't really apply here. So we are going to unfortunately be kind of handicapped when it comes to Linux numbers, which you'll see surprisingly doesn't affect much. So let's actually start with our games and uh, where they all ended up. All of the games, by the way, that we are going to be bringing up actually ran with very little tweaking and all of them have a pretty decent Proton DB rating. That being said, I have added a secondary rating that I personally am going to be using because uh, I seem to be a bit more uh, strict. I would say I am a bit more strict than Proton DB. So yeah, let's start getting into it. Let's start with the Elder Scrolls Online. The Elder Scrolls Online uh, played at max and there is a bit of difficulty getting into the game itself. You have to get through a prompt that you can't see. So you pretty much just hit enter until you get there. But after the game installs and starts running, well, it runs exactly the same as Windows at 100 frames per second, which is actually the maximum for this engine. And honestly, there is no difference. It just runs and even the anti-cheat doesn't really look at you like you're a problem. Up next is the Outer Worlds, which is problematic on both Windows and Linux. Running it at max, we got 60 with some hitching. Uh, running it on high, we can get 90 with some hitching, which is very similar to the Windows performance where we got maxed out at around 80. And for our high, it was a result of closer to 100 frames per second. These numbers stay within 10 frames of each other. And to be completely honest, as a Microsoft owned game studio, there's probably some under the hood-ish going on there. Not gonna point too many fingers, but yeah. Outer Worlds kind of was a problem to begin with. But I'm gonna be honest, the average frame rate was actually dropped down due to a loading error where the shaders weren't caching properly. This again can be fixed probably on Steam side and might actually even be fixed with the current version of Proton, which had 
the Elden Ring fix in it. Doom Eternal is up next. We played this one on completely maxed and we saw 170 frames per second on Linux and about 165 on Windows, meaning within pretty much a margin of each other. And honestly, just works perfectly. There's no issues with Doom Eternal on Linux. And that's probably because of the fact that it runs using the Vulkan engine. Cyberpunk 2077 was a tricky one to get running on Linux because we have to actually go through the GOG launcher, which surprisingly does work on Linux, but many of the people on ProtonDB recommended disabling the GOG splash screen, which unfortunately actually crashes the game. So and you can't run any launch options on it. You can't run game mode either. So it does run okay once you get past that point. The graphics options are, again, okay. And the thing about Cyberpunk 2077 is it's kind of difficult to run. You can use FSR though on Linux and you cannot use DLSS though. So you end up in an interesting situation. So if you actually max out the settings, you're gonna get around 30 frames per second. And if you drop it down medium, run it with FSR, it's about 60 frames per second. Now, as much difficulty as this game gave us to run, uh, the Windows numbers are higher. Uh, Max, you got 30 frames per second, which we do match one for one. And medium with FSR is around 80 frames per second. Granted, neither of which are great performances. And I would probably say and argue that really, Cyberpunk is just a difficult game to run in general. Devil May Cry 5 is the next game on our list. And uh, on Windows, yeah, we actually saw lower frame rates than the max setting on Linux. Linux maxed out, we got 160 frames per second, which is where I thought we were supposed to be with the Windows numbers. But for some reason, maybe it's the most recent update, we've actually been lower around 144 and 110 frames per second on max, 144 being high. Witcher 3 is up next, and uh, this game, uh, again, had some shader issues and hitching. After that loaded through, it was kind of fine. Maxed out, we had 60 frames per second, and on medium, 110 frames per second. Now, this is very similar to our Windows numbers, where it was 60 frames per second maxed out, and 100 frames per second on medium. So, yeah, pretty similar performance. Fantasy Star Online's anti-cheat unfortunately prevents Linux users from playing. I hope that they just port a native Linux version because uh, that game would be great on deck. Godfall is mainly because I just, you know, I have that game on Epic Game Launcher and I got it for free and really, I need to learn how to use Lutris is what I'm really saying. Borderlands 3 is the same situation. All of our VR games also do not work on Linux currently. I, I heard Valve's working on that, but it currently it's not something that we can do. Which brings us to a couple of games that I threw in there as sort of just extra test, if you will, for some of the more popular games on Windows. And that is for Monster Hunter and GTA 5. So for Monster Hunter, you actually have a surprising number of AMD specific features that also work with the NVIDIA card. So for example, you can use FSR, you can, which is actually CAS FSR, which is a different version of normal FSR. It, it works though, and honestly, you do see improvements for using it. So maxed out, no CAS FSR, you're looking at 50 frames per second, you're looking at 70 frames per second with CAS enabled, and then CAS FSR high, so dropping it down a little bit, you go all the way to 90 frames per second. And strangely enough, because of how CAS works, it actually looks close to native, which is pretty awesome. At running it at native resolution plus CAS actually looks weird. So dropping it down a little bit ends up giving better performance and also making it look better. So GTA 5 is one that honestly, like I was surprised to see ran perfectly fine. We had to do a little bit of tweaking in the Steam settings. We had to change the Steam preferred controller to the default controller or a disabled Steam controller. It was something weird in there. And the menus have a weird amount of slowdown. And I'm not sure where that comes from. But at 150 frames per second, it does pretty well. Now, overall, you can see that these performance numbers aren't bad. And when compared to the Windows numbers, they're within a margin of error. And in some cases, like 
it could literally be the overclocks that we were running that actually made the discrepancy. And unfortunately, without as many tools for overclocking, I personally did not know how to get the GPU to actually overclock. That being said, I am, I have been told that it is possible. But overall, you can see the Linux performance is actually really good. Not only is it good, but it's competitive to Windows without much tweaking at all. And if we were able to use game mode in some games like GTA and like Cyberpunk did not allow game mode, but if you are able to enable it, you can actually easily gain extra performance. I have a video entirely about gaining extra performance on Linux. And coming up soon for the Linux community and people like myself, Valve is going to be releasing a version of SteamOS. Now, I'm not sure if they're releasing it for all PCs or if it's just like a stable version to build your own Steam Deck, but if they are releasing it for all PCs, you know I'm going to be testing it. So, I honestly am looking forward to seeing what Valve does to further Linux gaming because right now it's in a great spot. Now, that then begs the question, should you buy a 3060 12 gig for Linux gaming? And I think the answer is yes, you could. It works just as well as it did on Windows within a margin of error. And driver support wise, as long as you have a distro that supports NVIDIA, it works just fine. Out of the box, I used Pop! OS with NVIDIA support, and that is the version that I ran for everything. I did not tweak it at all. We did not even change anything about the distro itself. We didn't add any extra code, nothing. It's just bare bones. And those are the numbers that we got, which means this card works very well with Linux and specifically Pop! OS. So overall, yeah, it's a good card for that. Now, if it's worth the money, that is a question that you would have to ask yourself because performance wise, it's very similar to a 5700 XT, which retailed for less than this card is currently going for on Newegg. But again, fingers crossed, it looks like prices are going down. And if this card drops in price by say 100 to $200, it might actually become a viable GPU again, because right now it's a little outside of its price range. But it is a decent little card and would be great for a mid-range build that runs 1080p and some 1440p content. Overall, I really enjoyed using this card and I'm still going to be using it in my gaming PC, at least until I get the next GPU that will be tested in our little makeshift lab here. So get subscribed if you're not, maybe comment, like, you know, help with the engagement, help me get a, another GPU by, uh, allowing me to save money for YouTube. <laughs> but that is where we're gonna end this video here. Thank you so much for watching. And if you enjoyed watching this video, yeah, you know what to do. And I will see you in the next one. Wolfie, out.